yeah there's a lot of things that just play into um the healing and just uh just um just different things that could serve as a remedy for like you know trying to repair or you know correct mental illness and stuff everything's not demonic um could be dietary could in fact be a generational curse there's a lot of stuff that plays into that and of course you know most commonly it's just due to traumatic experiences that we've had as children or I even think that you know in your DNA trauma from your ancestors can get passed down to you I believe that since they said that our diets hereditary diets can be passed down depending on like how your body responds to certain foods based on what your ancestors ate I believe that I mean you can't really escape stuff like that but my personal belief I actually believe I have the gift of faith with outlandish things it's actually kind of strange like i really struggle with faith for like personal things that i ask the father for but when it comes to like outlandish stuff i'm like oh yeah god can totally do that <laughs> it's like i do though i believe that even if you know your biochemistry and your ancestors you know this is affecting you in this way physiologically because of who you are as a person you're a descendant i still think that god's power can come in as a supernatural um essence and just literally recreate and refashion whatever that is i believe that um the blood of jesus does it so it's kind of like i literally believe that we have the blood of jesus running through our veins as believers so there is a there's a supernatural transformation that happens when you get saved and when you get baptized i believe all that stuff i believe that god's word and i believe that his power can change any raw which means chaos in hebrew any darkness that's there he can fix it and he can repair it um you just have to seek him for it and you have to have the right tools and the revelation on how to go about doing that so all this stuff is important like diagnosis all this stuff is important but it's not that it can't be changed you know like i think i think diagnosis is is relevant to know like what you're dealing with and just so you can kind of like, you know, get an idea of like where you are mentally. They already have a term for these things. So it can help you in that regard. But I wouldn't label myself that like this is who I am. I am a bipolar, schizophrenic, manic, depressive, you know, paranoid. Like, no. <laughs> like, it's what you're dealing with. But, you know, it's, it's good that, you know, you have somebody to give you the revelation from an um, educational standpoint on what you deal with, but that's, you're not going to stay that way. You know, it's, it's good to help us identify what we're dealing with, but so yeah, but God's power and in the name of Jesus, all that stuff can be corrected and it can be changed. So that's the good news. You know, receiving that is not good news. <laughs> receiving all of these extra names to your birth certificate of all those stuff that you deal with like that's not good news that's bad news but i mean it, it it's going to help you gauge which you know what you're dealing with and what you the necessary steps that you probably like need to take to like correct something like that is, is what that would do um like for example pigs in the parlor is a deliverance book it has like other um it talks about other it covers other things deliverance wise but it's mainly a, a revelation about schizophrenia the lord was personally dealing with uh brother frank hammond and his wife ida may and uh they were in deliverance ministry and they noticed that with people who were schizophrenic it was a little bit more difficult and jesus gave them a whole revelation about literally broke down to them and dissected the many different personalities that are in a schizophrenic and what the roots are rejection different things that result like fantasy lust or just maladaptive daydreaming that whole book pigs in the parlor is about that so the Lord didn't say, oh, she's not dealing with schizophrenia. Like, you know, like he can. I mean, he wouldn't label you that, though. He would just use it as something to identify, you know, what the problem is. So this yellow lighting is just not in favor of my life at all. I just, it, it will change. It will get better. I'm going to come up in life. I'm going to have better lighting. I'm going to just have to look yellow. I'm sorry. But anyway, so, um... yeah mine from what i've discerned and this is just me sharing just personally mental illness definitely runs in my family um narcissistic personality disorder also runs in my family on my dad's side they are full of narcissists on that side 
Now, whether it's due to something that happened when they were growing up, I, I, I can't say. I don't know what their lifestyles are like, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, I can see my dad has it. Um, it's raging. Like, there's so many different forms of narcissism. That's a whole other video. I don't even want to, like, touch the scope of that. Like, but I, I see that. So whether it's a classification of spirits or a certain stronghold or a certain generational curse, that's definitely on my dad's side of the family. 100%. Mental illness is on my mom's side. I've seen it. I can see it. Um, so, and it just kind of goes back to comparison and stuff. Like, I don't encourage people to compare yourself, but to be honest, like, there's some people who are dealing with mental illness that think they're perfectly fine because they don't know anything else. Like, this is how they always thought. But when you come into the company of somebody who's a lot more sound-minded and well-off, it's like... You know, something's kind of wrong with me. Like, not to make you feel bad, but I feel like sometimes comparison a, a little bit is, uh, it can kind of show you. Like, I've just seen some relatives that I just always thought they were off. Or sometimes some people you can just look at and you can just tell automatically that there's something wrong, you know, like mentally. But you, you don't say that. That's rude and it's, it's ugly and it's hurtful. But I've seen it in, um, the way that they operate, like, you can tell they don't think anything's wrong with them. If they do, they don't live like that. <laughs> like, they think this is normal. Like, this is just their personality. Like, and you can clearly see if you were to meet them, it's mental illness. You know? So, that's a whole nother conversation. Because <laughs> there's people that argue, well, you know, if it ain't hurting you, then, you know, be who you are, live in your truth. And I'm like, I guess it depends on what you want. Do you want God's will for your life? And do you want to be whole? And do you want to be what he originally wanted you to be? Or do you want to stand in this generational spirit's image of what it wants you and all your other, you know, relatives to be? I mean, it's up to you. I mean, because sometimes you could be dealing with mental illness and it's not really affecting like your daily life. It's just it's just who you are, the makeup of yourself as a person. And I don't really agree with that. I don't think there should be any kind of mental illness around. Not not that you're just tolerating. Like, if you can see it, no. I personally want to correct something like that. I mean, but anyway. So, I have... Uh, you have to be very careful talking about narcissism. <laughs> like, I'm not going to talk about that right now. But I, like I said earlier, I have definitely felt the Jezebel spirit trying to manifest mental illness on me. It's, oh my God. Whew. Just uh, the mind, man. The mind just does some stuff. Like, I've had her really try to just lead me especially just being in isolation and just being in my room all the time and not really ever having been out to just really be social with other people and stuff you kind of end up creating your own world mentally and it's called like maladaptive daydreaming and usually I would do it with music and I sometimes I can feel her I literally feel like I'm losing my mind like I'm losing myself in this fantasy and um it is it's all, it's it's due to her and some other spirits the Lord actually showed me in a dream because I actually saw them doing this over my mind. And I immediately thought of maladaptive daydreaming when I saw the spirit doing this and Jesus was standing next to me. So I know that that's demonic, but no, actually I felt her literally trying to like do this separation thing. Like she wants me to get to a point where she can fragment or break me off and I can float away into like this delusion, this, this, you know, Oof. It's, it's, it's creepy to even think like I mean so then you actually can lose your mind like I mean we say that as like a you know like a saying or something like no like people you can actually lose your mind it's not healthy to be daydreaming and imagination is healthy is creative it's a part of God's nature like it's it's relevant to some degree but when you're just like fantasizing and just you know you created this whole other realm and I don't think we realize, like, that's actually what that is. That you, That's a whole other realm that you invested in. And probably spirits are all over that. You know? And every time that you maladaptive daydream and you're listening to this music and you just go to this other place. I'm not talking about... I do that with worship and praise, personally. I do that. The Lord is in that. But I'm just saying, like, just abstractly just doing that stuff. Like, you are channeling these spirits in this inner world and this system that you created in the spirit realm and you don't even know it. And that's why you're tormented. You have an open gateway, basically, for these spirits. And more than likely, they're putting the thoughts in your mind. So you're kind of communicating with them. It's not healthy. So 
I, I could probably go in deep with all the many things that she's tried to put on me mentally. Just stuff that I've thought about and just how my mind, I, sometimes I literally felt my mind squeezing, like tensing up because of how intense just the thoughts were. Just intrusive thoughts. Like I never, I never struggled with blasphemous thoughts the way some believers that I've encountered throughout my walk have. It's never been anything like that. Never any voices or anything. It's just like... Whew, Jesus, I don't, I don't know. I can't get into it. But what I do want to share that I deal with is, um, to be honest, I feel like if I was to go talk to a psychiatrist and try to get a diagnosis, I think I would be a lot of different stuff. I have noticed that I do struggle with some OCD and that actually was pointed out to me. Uh, I, I always kind of wondered if I did, but like I said, when you don't have anything to compare what you do to your behavior to, you think it's just you. I just do weird stuff like uh, all my gel pens here, my little stand. They have to be and they have to be color coordinated from red to, you know, black. You may think, well, that's not a big thing. It is to me. Like if I literally go through them every other, I don't want to say every other day, but I often I'll go through the same gel pen, same exact pack that you didn't have for like a year now, and I will color code on a a different set of paper every color just to make sure that they are in the proper shade order that I want. If any of them are out, or I could be, let's say for example, um, this, this pen here, I'm almost out. This is like a aqua sea, it's not sea green, it's like an aqua blue. Let's say like I just did, I just decided to do like a random color coding with the gel pens and I'm literally almost done with this pen. If I found another color that was supposed to be used before this one, I will stop using this one and I will put it back. I will be angry about it for like 50 minutes <laughs> and I will literally start using the full tube and do this one afterwards. I'm serious. It's just stuff like that. It's not like a huge like obsessive compulsive, but I've noticed it like just some stuff is not normal. Like why does that bother you? Like that's not even really... Um, everything has to be in a certain order. If I write something a certain way and it just looks weird, like it will bother me. I have to white it out or I have to do it over. Like it's just, it's, I do that with a lot of different stuff or like, I don't know if this is just me. Let me know if y'all do this too. When I'm driving or like when I was a kid, I still do this today. But if I would like be sitting in the back seat as we're passing up, like, you know, like patches of, um, uh, of grass, like on the sidewalk, like, you know, when you're driving down the street, I would count like the seconds between the space of each, <laughs> Of each, like, you know, you know, little space between, like, the green, you know, grass and stuff. And I would get triggered if, like, while I'm counting it, it just, I don't know. <sighs> Maybe I didn't get all the way to three or just, just weird stuff like that. I was watching some OCD videos and just the stuff they were pointing out to, like, probably tell, like, if you have it or not. I was like... I never knew that that was OCD. Like, I've been like that my whole life. Like, I, I do stuff like that. Um, pacing around the house. But that that was more tied into, like, maladaptive daydreaming. Just kind of being in this other place mentally and just walking around the house. Like, I mean, if somebody were to see you do that, it would look really weird. Like, why are you doing that? But, um... <clears throat> just, just with a lot of different stuff. So, I think that would be one of them. I definitely have ADD. Um, one hundred percent have that, and and to be honest, just just on a more like psychological level, not even really like um struggling with like attention and distraction and stuff. I'm talking about like I've and this is I think that that's due to the fragments and the altars and stuff too. I actually think that ADD probably is due to fragments and altars as a root, and people probably don't know that. I feel like I have four different minds. I'm gonna say four to seven. Not in a schizophrenic way, not in a way to where I hear voices. I just literally feel like, like for example, let's say like my core self, like I know I need to lose weight. I really want to do this detox. I'm going to buy all these fruits and vegetables and I'm going to do like this alkaline diet, raw vegan. The next day, some other part will kind of like come to the surface and I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to eat that today. I want to eat noodles. I don't want to eat noodles because I know it's processed food and I don't want to put that in my body. But I can't. It's like something else kind of comes and it's like, well, I want to do this. And 
Well, there goes your alkaline diet. That's why I haven't lost any weight. This is what I deal with like every single day. I have set out to do fasts that I've never completed. Some of them actually instructed by the Lord to do. I was never able to complete because I literally feel like I have four different independent wills. Like, not like to the extreme. Like, they're not, I don't really consider them altars because altars and fragments to me, they're kind of, they're, they're similar, but they're different. Altars to me are like actual altar personalities. Like, I don't have that. But fragments, I feel like are different pieces of your soul that identify with different things based on why they were fragmented in the first place. Like, I still have some fragments that like rock music. I know that's crazy to think about. But like, And I'm kind of like in this point where like, I enjoy so many different kinds of music. Um, as far as sounds and stuff, you know, but it does make you question, well, how much of this is you and how much of this is some abstract part of you that was fragmented when you were 14 and you started getting into rock culture I mean see you just really don't know so um this is what I deal with every single day I, I would say probably four about four I can be reading the word I can't focus I can't focus because there's one part of me that's thinking about a, a particular maybe a possible or potential dog that's walking down the street outside that I don't even know where it came from. I'm just thinking about maybe some pet just walking down the street outside. And then there's another part of me as I'm reading and trying to focus on scripture thinking about I want some popcorn right now. Like I really want some popcorn after I just decided 15 minutes ago that okay, I'm going to start my fast at 12am and it's 12.06. Stuff like that. Like this is every single day for me. Y'all probably notice it in videos when I talk about something, I just lose my train of thought. Like, I mean, unless the Holy Spirit gives it back to me or I literally go back and like, you know, watch the video. Like, oh, that's what I was talking about. Because I just, and they were talking about that in the videos about ADD. Like, uh, you talk over people or you talk a lot. Or you just really have like this anticipation and like get your part out, get your word out. Or when you talk, it always goes into different branches about different things. It never is a consistent thought. You just always like get into this. And then, like, you know, like, I'm like, well, I do that, <laughs> like, all the time. So, um, just even reading the article of, like, you know, prescription-wise, if you were to be medicated for something like that, I just wanted to know, like, what exactly classifies as ADD? And I had everything, like, 100%. But this is affecting me spiritually. Like, this actually affects my spiritual walk. I can't fast. I can't read. I can't pray because I can't focus to do it. And like, it may sound like simple, somebody saying it in a video, but no, if you were actually living it the way that I live it, I literally cannot function as a human being. It feels like I have like four to seven different people just kind of living inside of me. And anytime I choose to do something, it's like, it, it never gets done. And that's, I understand why scripture says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Like there's been many things I've started on here with y'all, I've just never completed. And it's because of what I deal with. Like sometimes I'll just forget. Um, that's another thing they say with ADD, memory loss, uh, which like I said, I think that's, that's still tied into altars and fragments stuff because there's certain parts of you that were active when you were doing this that the other part of you that you're currently operating in now, the, of course it wouldn't remember because it's not the part of you that was speaking at that time or that was, you know, doing this thing. So. And that's something that that brother with his playlist about altars and fragments, he was actually talking about. But if you read ADD, like a uh, diagnosis, that's what they say, like, you know, memory loss. Like, you just forget stuff. Like, I can't even tell you what I did yesterday. I probably have to think really hard and, like, dig between all these compartments. Like, because when I'm doing things daily throughout the day, my mind is always somewhere else. So even though I'm functioning and I'm doing something physically, like I can still be think. That's why I'm like, if you ask me, I'm like, I don't know. Like, cause it's kind of like, I wasn't really present from my own experience. Like it's, it's just, it, I know that sounds really creepy. Like, but that's, I've been dealing with that for years. And like I said, like I thought, I don't want to say I thought it was normal. It's just like, I knew it was me and this is Brandy. Like this is what Brandy deals with. So I didn't have a chance to like compare it to other people, but I knew like, internally like something's wrong with me like this is it's just not normal to be doing stuff like this or to be feeling this or to like I can't focus I can't function or I can't sit at my desk for a certain amount of time like I can really just I really want to get into the word like I really want to dig and just read God's word and just study and just I'm so like excited and I can't sit at my desk for more than like maybe an hour or two and I have to something just makes me just go lay down like I just can't like 
It's, it's not a spirit. I don't think it's a spirit. It's just... <sighs> and this, this is what everything... I'm giving, like, examples. Like, this is just, you know, scratching the surface of what I deal with, with, like, little stuff. That, that's what my, my life, like, or my day mostly consists of. It's like I do dream interpretations. I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. Like, I'll, I'll read the word, or I have so many Christian books that y'all know about. Like, it's that's pretty much, like, what I do. But even with the dream interpretations, like... This is me. I'll literally sit at my desk and I will literally tell the father, okay, Lord, like, which one do you want me to work on first? And like, I usually cast lots for this for as far as his sovereignty and selecting the dream. And that's usually always accurate when I do it that way through prayer. But I'll be convinced like, okay, maybe I got it wrong. Let me ask him again, like three times. <laughs> and sometimes he'll give the same dream, like more like, yes, Brandy, like go do this dream. And I'm like, okay, but I have all these other regular dreams about my spiritual life and about my bondage that he really wants me to interpret. It's very important for me to get this message. He gave it to me like two years ago. I still haven't interpreted. I need to interpret this dream. Then I'm like, well, you have your industry dreams here or, um, yeah, industry and ministry dreams or something. And you need to like, you know, study these and interpret these dreams or something. I'm like, well, it's just like, I need all this revelation that's packed into these dreams that I need to know about. And I can't pick one dream just I can't it's like basically how they say you pick one task to focus on and you never complete any of those tasks you end up working on like several projects at once and now you have four uninterpreted dreams and instead of you just working on one and focusing on this one with the Lord and finishing it and completing it now you have three other ones to where you're okay once I finish this scene I'm gonna go to the next scene the next dream like <laughs> you know and just it's just like <sighs> or I've, I've created schedules for myself. I've created like daily, you know, fasting schedules. I've created just regular schedules of different things for me to work on on a particular day. So that way there's order. I don't stick to it. It's, it's really crazy. And it's like, I wonder why the Lord didn't actually tell me sooner that this is something that I was dealing. I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. But now that I'm I'm actually finding out all these different diagnoses and stuff, I'm like, well, it makes sense now. Like, that's what you deal with. It kind of feels like how it felt like when I first got glasses or when I first realized I needed glasses. My vision had been blurry probably for probably for a very long time. I probably just thought it was normal. Like, I remember my, my vision being really blurry, but I just always thought. And it's kind of gotten worse since I started wearing glasses, like to the point where it kind of feels like you, you're dependent on them. I think everybody says that. I don't like that. But, um... See, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> um, yeah. <sighs> my vision, uh, it was always kind of blurry, but I just always thought, like, oh, like, maybe it's my diet. Like, I need to go plant-based or I need to fast or that could possibly be the case if you're you know, your bad vision is due to mucus buildup, then yeah, fasting would help. But I mean, I just always like attribute it to something like dietary. Like that's why my eyes are blurry. It's like, nah, you need glasses. <laughs> I was at Melanie's house. Melanie, she didn't have my prescription, obviously. As, as nearsighted wise, she did. But like, no, 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 not nearsighted. I think farsighted with her glasses. It was like, I could see clearly now the rain is gone. <laughs> you know, farsighted wise. So I put on Melanie's glass because she had like this mannequin like she sews and stuff and she had like numbers. You know how the mannequins are numbered like on the chest and I couldn't make out what the numbers were. I'm just like, oh, I'm like, is that a five or is that like a, because I was, no, it said 180 or 185 or something. And I thought that maybe they put the weight of the body frame of the actual mannequin on the mannequin to like, you know, this is what somebody would look like if they were 185 or something. She was like, no, that's just the number of the mannequin. I was like, oh. I couldn't see the number. And this is me being like maybe 10 feet away, <laughs> like 10 to 15, 15 feet away. And that's how the initial discovery was made that I needed glasses and she had them. And I just put them on for fun one day and I looked, I was like, oh my God, everything was so clear and like crisp. I could see the numbers <laughs> and I was like taking them off, putting them on, taking them off. I'm like, oh my God, I've been blind all this time and I didn't even know. So it's like, yeah. That's how I see it with this this stuff I've been looking up, like the ADD and um, <sighs> the OCD and stuff like that. It's so sad. 
<laughs> it's not a laughing matter because it's something that I'm like I'm seeking treatment for. I don't I don't think it's good to be like that or. I feel like some stuff you probably can't really control, like OCD, because that stuff like stems from just psychological stuff from like the past. Like, there's a reason why people are like that. So I know for a fact that it's like that with me, especially when you just kind of been in a cubicle by yourself for years and you've been isolated. I mean, I think at some point some, that can affect anybody psychologically. Somebody, some people could probably be more organized just really because like you had all this time to yourself for years. So it's like that's a benefit. But I mean, when you do it with everything and just some stuff that just is kind of unnecessary, it's like... I'm just interested in like the root of everything. If I feel like there's a defiling root and this may not be harmful, like, you know, in your behavior as a person, like for me, it makes me very organized. I'm a very organized person. I'm serious. I will literally come to your house and I will clean your whole house. I do it with any friend I've ever visited, like any, especially in the past, like even when I was like a teenager, I would clean her room. I did her laundry. I washed her dishes. I just, if that's something I just like doing, that's like something I take pleasure in doing. But no, like it's just some stuff that just bothers me. Like I will literally come to your house and I will organize, I will categorize everything in your house, your whole pantry. You will come back home and your whole house will be clean. Seriously. So it's some stuff I feel like it's not bad. I mean, it, it makes you a more organized person. Like it's, you're a neat and tidy person, but if it really is truly something psychological and there's a reason why you're like that, like it's going to play out into other things as well. That's just kind of like, it's like a mental disturbance. Like with my gel pens, like that's not normal. <laughs> like, why are you like, I don't know. I just, or I can't use, I can buy two different kinds of college rule paper and I, I write with one of them. I write on one of the college rule paper and some of them I feel like it's not as quality. I don't write with that paper. It will bother me to death if I accidentally wrote on that sheet. Or like my sister, she came in here and she was like trying to use a highlighter. And I was like, no, don't use this paper. Like use that one because I don't I don't use that college rule paper over there. Um, it's not big stuff. It's, it's, it's there though. I see it now. Now when it's pointed out to you, you do see it like, oh, like I do deal with that. Like I do do this, you know? So, but, um, she actually said that to me yesterday. She was like, are you OCD or something? I thought that was so odd that she brought that up around this time that I'm actually looking up this stuff, like, you know, psychological health and treatment and stuff like that. She said that yesterday. I was like, I feel like the Lord was like giving a little nugget, like, oh, that too. <laughs> Like, yeah, you got a little OCD, too. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. It's, it's not severe, though. Like, the stuff that I've, that I've seen on videos, I don't deal with it to that degree. I'm like, I see some people that are like, you know, you got to rinse three times. And mm, I, I do do stuff like that, but not with, not with cleansing stuff. I don't do it with stuff like that. Probably with other things. Um trying to think um mm, yeah I don't like bugs or insects I don't kill roaches I'm terrified of them and I hate them and I want them all to die and burn in hell but I will never kill one because I just I just don't I don't do all that mm -mm. nope I will spray you from a distance with raid I don't know if that's tied into OCD. <laughs> like, I just, I just have certain, like, nah. But, um, no, I would say, like, um, <sighs> it's kind of hard to talk about in a video because I always describe it as having, like, so many different blocks and compartments. I can actually feel them, like, within myself, like, just mentally. Like, they're there. And, um, <clears throat> It is something that would definitely have to be like, you know, handled at the root, like with the Lord deliverance wise. I don't have that available to me right now. And I'm not even in a mental state to like try to deal with it by myself. And that's why I would always go to like different deliverance ministers for help about altars and fragments. Like I know for a fact that that's what it is. But if I can't even fast by myself because my will is just like. It's just a sense of just being scattered. Like just, it's not even really like towards certain things. Like with everything, it's just who you are. Your whole makeup is just a scattered individual. Like you don't have any stability. You don't really have like, 
there's a lot of things that I get excited about I would love to do with y'all that I probably said I was going to do there's books I started reading with y'all I didn't finish like just stuff like that like it's just they yeah they said with ADD like you start one thing and you just move on to the next like it's never like really a completion or fulfillment of anything you just keep hopping or or an example of like how I said like oh I'm gonna get off of YouTube I'm gonna fast like <laughs> I think like I used to be very embarrassed about it at first because I'm like I know they probably think like I'm freaking crazy like or at least maybe hypocritical from a religious standpoint like why is she saying she gonna fast and get off but then she's back <laughs> like this is what's what I'm talking about <laughs> like it's not funny but no like I can probably have a severe like sincere not severe sincere will to like fast or to like you know withdraw from something for a season but my mind it just like no, it's just, it's constantly going or like when I have a new thought or something I really want to be vocal about like, oh, I need to make a video. Like, and it's, it's instant. It's not really like a, oh, I should think about this. Like, mm, you're fasting right now. Like, I'll probably have those thoughts, but it doesn't really, it doesn't happen like that. It just kind of happens like this YouTube fast becomes something completely like hindsight and something else is just like let's talk about this <laughs> like this is gonna be a really good video this needs to be talked about and it's just you know it just it just kind of happens and it's like well you ain't ever gonna get off youtube <laughs> until you get like that that's situated like I mean, it may not look bad but when you when you have somebody start to share with you what they're actually dealing with it's like oh, okay like that's that's not good because like i said it may not be bad now. It's bad if God doesn't want her on there and she's doing it, but she can't even be obedient because she's so scattered. Like, that's why deliverance is necessary. So if it was a situation where he was telling her to get off or you need to take a chill break from, you know, Instagram or something or like, which delete that as a whole, but I'm just saying like just anything like, and you can't, you literally cannot do it. That's a problem. And of course, if it's like playing out into different stuff as well. <sighs> And as far as him like showing me in school, which he has confirmed that like, that's still a thing, I'm like, I don't even know. I'm a very intelligent person and like I like education, period. I like learning stuff, but it's like I can't focus to learn. I'm like, good luck with that. There are some books that I read, like I said, like my mind is always somewhere else when I'm reading. So if I'm, I could be like on the same page for like 15 minutes because I keep. I keep having to read the same first line over and over again because it looks like I'm reading it if you were watching me but in, in my mind like I'm just somewhere else like and I can't control it it's literally something I cannot control like I would need like something that has me fixated on what I'm doing or like what I'm reading in order for me to really focus and be consistent and complete something nothing gets completed and for a minute, I was thinking like, um, I had a conversation with, with a deliverance minister last year and we were talking about Jezebel and stuff. And he actually, he referenced something like that. He said that she's there, but she, she has, she knows she has all these different parts to you. So she's messing with you basically. Like she knows she can make this one do that, make this fragment do this. And she just kind of has you just like, so she's comfortable basically. And I agreed with that.